This is the letter from uh, Sir Alan Nobo yeah. to the United Nations based on a resolution 1044, which instructed them to effect the union. And he wrote to the U.S. Secretary General, telling the U.S. Secretary General that uh, on the 6th of March 1957, the union between Western Togoland and Gold Coast, now Ghana, has been effected. All right. So I'm going to take a moment and read this letter for our viewers and listeners to know. If the producer can put this on, on the screen too, I'll be very happy. Um, so the caption is United Nations Trusteeship Council um, Distribution General T1301, 6th March 1957. Original English. 19th session, item 9 of the provisional agenda. The future of Togoland under British administration. Letter dated 6 March 1957 from the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs in the United Kingdom government to the Secretary General. Now, this is what it says. In accordance with the third operative paragraph of a United Nations General Assembly resolution of 13 December 1956, I have the honor to inform Your Excellency on behalf of Her Majesty's Government in the United Kingdom that, with effect from midnight on 5 6 March 1957, under terms of the Ghana Independence Act 5 and 6, the territories previously comprised in the Gold Coast became the independent state of Ghana. Under the same act, the union of the former trust territory of Togoland under British administration with the independent state of Ghana took place with effect from the same time and date. Sorry. So this confirmed yeah. that there had been a union between us. So then the question is, UN also gave instruction that if a union is chosen, yeah. the working of the union must be stipulated in a memorandum of understanding. Okay. He asked the Britain to write the union constitution for the two countries. Okay. Now the question is, even the union agreement, where is the union agreement? This is our simple question we are asking. Since 1957, if a union is effected, since 1957, look at that time to now. It's a very long time. Yeah. We are asking that Ghana show us the union document so that we can look into it uh, and know our rights and privileges in the union. If we don't have it, let's sit down and, and write a new one. Okay. If you have it, let's sit down, look into it, and review it. I, I just, you know, when you read the documents, I've had the opportunity to read a few of the documents. Sure. One word keeps coming up. Plebs, plebiscite. Plebiscite, yes. Yeah. Plebiscite. plebiscite. Um, actually, the meaning of plebiscite is a direct vote of all members of an electorate on an important public question such as a change in the constitution. Now, this is where it gets tricky. The difference between referendum and plebiscite are clear. Referenda are binding on the government. They are binding on the government. But a plebiscite is sometimes called advisory referendum because the government does not have to act on its decision. This is self-explanatory. Now, my question is simple. From the explanation I just gave you, does it mean PLC is fighting a losing battle because nothing was binded then? Uh, we are not fighting a losing battle. Okay. Yeah. Because even in the resolution, the plebiscite was adopted uh, by the United Nations uh, General Assembly, saying okay. that we should vote in plebiscite to ascertain the wish of Western Togolanders. Okay. We should vote in plebiscite to ascertain the wish. And when the wish is ascertained, and the yes for union is established, then the union should be established. And by the grace of God, uh, whatever happened, even though uh, the premise itself have its own issue. Yeah. But then, what What do you mean by its own issue? Yeah, uh, there have been a, a document. Uh, they try uh, at the point of the premise, you realize that uh, UGCC, uh, yeah. uh, CPP, I'm sorry, CPP, which is the Conversion People's Party, belonged to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, was founded in South Pond in 1949. Now, by the fifties, Kwame Nkrumah already had his party established in Western Togoland. Mm -hmm. So, at the point, at the time that the plebiscite is supposed to go on, the plebiscite, those uh, assisting the uh, registration of the plebiscite, were members of the CPP in our land. And they are, they've used so many things to disqualify people who are perceived to be at the plebiscite. Mm. The things like the tax collection. I have letters from uh, Togoland Congress to the United Nations and the uh, Plebiscite Commissioner 
telling them this is the document I got from the United Nation and I, I sent you a copy. Yeah. Uh, 477. Yeah, pages. that was a, that was a huge. And I, I make a copy. I just I can't read everything, so I make a copy of them. Some of the complaints from our people, and then uh, uh, from the plebiscite, um, we note that with regret, um, uh, we note with regret that tax receipts are still being used as a, a qualification for registration in the plebiscite with intent to eliminate Togoland nationals from registration for Togoland plebiscite, while at the same time, the CPP council staff members exclusively employed yeah. by the registration officers to continue register any CPP elements and supporters without necessarily requesting them to produce tax receipts. Can I, can I see that document? Yeah. A, whole, a whole lot. Uh, I just make a copy so you might not 